The uh, 2019 guidelines on uh, chronic coronary syndromes um, have been prepared carefully by our task force and um, myself and uh, Professor Knuti. It's the follow-up of the 2013 version and what will be apparent to you is a change in title. It's now called Guidelines on the Diagnosis and Management of Chronic Coronary Syndromes. Instead of chronic CAD or chronic angina or stable angina. This is because we want to insist on the fact that in between acute events, like acute coronary syndromes, the disease is either progressing or stabilized or regressing, but certainly not stable. Lots of things happen because the plaque can change its composition. There can be regression under the effect of therapies such as lifestyle modification, um, drug therapies, and revascularization. So, based on this, uh, we also offer the colleagues in the document to consider the most frequent clinical presentations. Uh, for instance, um, the person who comes for the first time to the outpatient clinic with suspected coronary artery disease because of symptoms, but also the person who's found to have coronary disease totally asymptomatic because he or she underwent a coronary CT examination. Another clinical presentation pertains to a patient who has had an acute event but is recovered and is now in a stable condition, or patients who have been revascularized. So these are all clinical presentations that we will focus on in the document so that it encompasses a broad spectrum of presentations, not just the stable angina syndrome. Now the new data and the new evidence that has influenced the content, I can summarize. First of all, the probability of disease in the patients presenting with symptoms has decreased by at least half meaning that we are dealing with subsets of patients where um, the risk that they have the disease when we ask ourselves the questions is actually much smaller than before. This has an important impact on the way you make the diagnosis. The role of CT, coronary CT, has increased very significantly and in fact we think there is now three ways to three strategic diagnostic pathways. One that relates to the use of non-invasive testing, another one that relates to the use of coronary CT, and the third one even is coronary angiography, invasive angiography, as long as you can perform functional measurements. Imaging has changed, and today, both function and anatomy can be obtained invasively or non-invasively. So this gives you more opportunities depending on the clinical presentation. What has changed as well is a number of other situations like the fact that we have very strong anti-diabetic drugs that now have an impact on cardiovascular outcomes. So that needs to be taken into account in patients with diabetes and CAD. We have recognition more and more often that angina and symptoms can be due to microvascular disturbances and this can now be identified very clearly. We also have some evidence that if you target stenting and revascularization by functional testing, we may have an impact on heart events, namely reduction in spontaneous MI over longer periods of follow-up. So these are a number of new data, new evidence that uh, have been uh, playing an important role in you know, shaping the content of this new guideline on the diagnosis and treatment of chronic coronary syndromes.